Hi there, it's Mimsy here. Today we're gonna to talk about the tools that you need for upholstery. So some of these tools are essential. There's only a couple that are essential. You can kind of make do with a lot of tools that you probably already have on hand. Okay, so the number one thing I think that is the most useful or the thing that makes upholstery the easiest, in my opinion, is having a pneumatic staple gun and a compressor. You can definitely do upholstery with just a manual staple gun, but it's gonna be difficult. First of all, the pneumatic staple gun has a bit of a nose to it so that you can get this into the crevices of your piece of furniture. Not to mention, it's really hard on your hands to have to squeeze a manual staple gun that many times. This is just so easy and light and you can move it around and the pneumatic stapler is by far I, the number one item to make upholstery jobs manageable. Otherwise, it's just grueling. So this is what I would have. And you have to have a certain uh, PSI in order to operate this. And I have those, uh, the, the few links that I have in my Amazon shop are appropriate for upholstery. I bought a little bit of a larger compressor because I wanted to be able to use it to operate nail guns and also to be able to use it to operate for spray painting. That's why I have a bigger one. So I'll link to the, I've got three compressors on my list. The first one would is perfect, great for upholstery, just operating a nail gun. The second one um, is a little bit bigger. You could operate some nail guns, the staple gun for upholstery, and a couple other tools. And then the last one would allow you to do a little bit of light painting, a little bit of furniture painting and things. So if you're looking just for upholstery, then um, a pancake compressor is appropriate. So now we'll go into my workroom and I'll give you the rest of the list. One more uh, quick side note regarding the compressors is that the larger your compressor, the more air it's compressed air it'll hold, which means the less it will run. If you get a bigger compressor, your your compressor is going to run less than if you get a tiny pancake compressor. So. If noise is an issue, as you can see, I'm out here in my garage. I keep my compressor in my garage. I close these doors and I'm in my workroom, so I don't have to listen to the sound of this compressor running when it runs, because it's loud. So that's something you might want to consider is where you're going to keep your compressor, so how long you need to buy your hose, if you're going to keep your compressor somewhere other than where you're going to be working, or if you can't keep your compressor somewhere other than where you're gonna be working, then you might wanna consider the quiet compressor because these things are loud and you don't wanna to have to listen to that all day long when you're working on a piece. So just something to consider. And a little side note, I'm not a professional upholsterer, so I don't do upholstery every day. I have done a lot of upholstery. I worked in a shop um, for a very busy upholsterer, so I learned a ton from him. I took an upholstery class years ago at a night school, at an adult night school. So anyway, I am not a professional, so I make do with what I've got on hand. I will link to all the things I'm telling you in, in the description box, and I think I'm gonna put together like an Amazon shop with a lot of these things so you can pick and choose the things that you think you'll need um, or the things that you don't have. So anyway, just a not a professional here. So after the air, air compressor and staple gun, the next things that you definitely need to have is you've gotta have a pair of pliers, a decent pair of pliers. They need to be uh, rounded at the top like this. You see how they're flat right there and then rounded? I like these even better because the flat part at the top is even smaller, which makes it real easy to grab a hold of a staple and just roll it out of the wood. Then you're gonna need a one of these guys, which is a staple puller. This is actually a nail puller, but a staple puller, and I'll put a link to the staple puller here. A staple puller is a really great tool to have. I actually don't have one. I have been doing upholstery for all these years and all I use is my pliers and and my flathead screwdriver and this one is actually bent slightly just like a staple puller. So what I do is I use this flathead and I use this to bang 
underneath staples and pull them up and then I grab a hold of them and rock them out of the wood. But a staple puller is is a really nice thing to have. A small hammer is nice too for when you need to bang the tip of your staple puller to get it underneath. However, I don't even do that. I just use the pliers because I already have them in my hand and there's a good weight to these, so that's how I do it. A mallet is very helpful. An upholstery mallet is generally a white rubber mallet. I don't have one of those, so what I generally do is I wrap my mallet with a piece of Dacron or a piece of fabric, one or the other, but a mallet's a good thing to have. You'll definitely need a mallet for putting in the um, closures, the back closures on all your pieces. Um, let's see. The only other thing that I can think of is you will need some a, a few large upholstery needles and some button thread um, for doing your decks on your pieces of furniture, so you'll need that. A couple other little things that you may not think about is you need to have a tape measure, a soft tape measure like this comes in very handy for measuring around arms down into the uh, seat crevice so one of these would be good for that plus these are super cheap um, you will need a pair of wire cutters or gardening you know the gardening wire cutters for when you need to clip this and also your ply grip you could potentially just use a pair of junk scissors to cut these um, but wire cutters makes that very easy and um, you'll probably need an iron or a steamer what else pins some upholstery pins some t-pins for holding things in place like when you're closing up the back or the sides you might need to hand stitch you might need some t-pins or upholstery pins or the skewer type pins and that might be about it oh you need a razor knife one like this where you can replace the blade often because these dull really quickly so you can replace the blade or take the blade out and sharpen it so that would be another thing that you could have is a sharpening stone would is very good if you're going to do a lot of upholstery clearly if you're just a beginner or someone like me a hobbyist then you will just buy more blades, unless you're very frugal and you want to sharpen them. <laughs> okay, so last but certainly not least is your sewing machine. For some upholstery jobs, you need to do very little sewing, and that's kind of the beauty of upholstery is that there's not a whole lot of sewing. A lot of upholstery jobs, the only sewing you need to do is the cushions. So the sewing machine is um, important because you need to have one that is going to be able to sew through multiple layers of fabric because oftentimes you'll be sewing through four layers of fabric and upholstery fabric is thick on its own single layer so you'll need a fairly decent sewing machine this is my sewing machine that i've been using for about 15 years before that my mom used it for 20 years it is a bernina 1120 and this thing is a workhorse. It is absolutely indestructible. I just, I can't even say enough good things about this sewing machine. Um, my sewing machine technician who I have, or who I had come over and clean it year after year and just service it, said I'll never be able to get a machine this good. So if you can find a, an older Bernina, 1120, 1140, these are great machines. This is a consumer grade machine it's not an upholstery machine so this is not a walking foot machine it's just a regular consumer grade machine but it's amazing if you're going to be doing a ton of upholstery you're thinking about going into business then a walking foot machine would be is essential and i have a video on what is a walking foot and why it's important i'll link to that video here you can watch that but anyway um, sewing machines, if you can find a used sewing machine in good condition, which I think you can find them like crazy all over Facebook Marketplace because people buy them and then don't ever use them. So I feel like you could probably find this exact machine or one just as good for a very deep discount. Or you can buy new. Um, and I will link to a decent machine in the um, description box below and in my Amazon cart if, if that's something that you're thinking of doing. But I think a used machine would be just a better uh, value. Um, 
that ought to do it. So if you want to um, check out the easiest type of furniture to upholster or the easiest style of furniture to upholster, check that video right here.